for those of you uh, who are quite familiar with our, uh, our partner program, uh, we thank all of our uh, professional photographers out there in the space for joining us today. Uh, we're going to talk about some very important stuff. We're going to try and keep it brief to under a half hour here and uh, give you something to take home and to help protect your data as far as information goes. And what we're going to talk about here is bulletproofing your backups and saving your sanity. Uh, of course, we'll be talking about professional data recovery for professional photographers specifically, uh, since that's what uh, you all came to listen to today. And thanks for the opportunity always to speak to this audience. Um, today, we're also thinking about all of our friends and partners in the uh, United States who are unfortunately afflicted by fires in Colorado and the bad weather in Florida. We need to make sure that uh, we're thinking about everybody out there, not just business on days like today, but natural disasters, of course, are part of the reason we do data recovery, and we'll touch on that as well. Now, for those of you who don't know me, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Chris Bross, and I'm a senior enterprise recovery engineer here at DriveSavers. Uh, I also head up the R&D team on NAND flash and SSD devices, you know, the devices all of you use to store your valuable and sometimes priceless photos. Also be joined uh, in the audience by Dorian Griffiths, who manages our professional photography partners. Thank you very much, Dorian. And John Christopher is also here, and he'll handle uh, some of the Q&A for us at the end of the session and deals with all of our partner communications. So today we're here to talk about how to protect your valuable photos and data. You'll learn about different backup strategies and the pros and cons of the most popular methods. And we're going to talk about what unfortunately can happen even when you've tried to protect and backup your data when the unexpected occurs, data loss. What to do if you lose precious data. Uh, drive savers capabilities and services for professional photographers. Your data security as well, which is a very important topic. And we'll end today with a Q&A session to answer what we can uh, and take your additional questions offline. And I'll announce this at the end as well, but uh, use the chat function and uh, send to all entire audience. And then uh, we'll filter through those questions and we'll take them live. So without further ado, let's get moving with the presentation. So a picture is worth a thousand words, memories, dollars, or more. Remember this photo? I'm sure you do. It's fairly iconic. It was raising the flag at ground zero by Thomas E. Franklin. Imagine having just taken this shot, an epic once-in-a-lifetime event, digitally captured on your flash media card. Franklin said, this was an important shot. It told of more than just death and destruction. It said something to me about the strength of the American people and these firemen having to battle the unimaginable. It had drama, spirit, courage in the face of disaster. But I was afraid that something was wrong with my camera and that these once in a lifetime pictures were ruined. Well, Franklin shot that photo with a digital camera, of course, and he said he lost the first 80 photos he shot during the day while the trade centers were still standing. But this one, luckily, was saved by drive savers. Now imagine that this was your photo, and now that this photo is gone, how would that make you feel? What would you do? You didn't make a backup copy. You didn't have time to email it to anybody. You surely didn't print it to paper. And now the original flashcard doesn't function or has been formatted and doesn't work or you can't get to the data. Take a deep breath. Now what? Well, let's talk about now what and why. Why do we do data recovery? And why is it important to protect your data? Well, the pie chart here gives you a pretty good illustration uh, across the board of all the devices we work on at Drive Savers and why they require data recovery. You'll see that the biggest piece of the pie, the blue section, uh, is electromechanical failure. That means there's something wrong with the device. If it's a hard drive, it's, <clears throat> it's clicking. If it's a RAID system, multiple drives are down. If it's a flash memory card, maybe it's been physically bent, broken, or inaccessible. That's the largest reason we do data recovery, and it's also the reason that software in the field often doesn't work to recover data. It's because it takes an engineering interaction uh, in the laboratory and in the clean room in order to get the device to function. The other pieces of the pie are software corruption, user error, natural disasters, um, of course, of which there are many right now, and viruses. So again, remember, this is across the board of all the devices we see. But very relevant to this audience <clears throat> and some interesting points we found in our statistics about camera flash memory and why we're recovering it. 
And this would be any format of camera flash memory. Uh, but you can see that about a third of the pie is inaccessible due to physical area errors with the media or with the card. Uh, the red portion, a good 30%, is absolutely user error. Those are accidental deletions of photos or formats of media cards. That's a huge percentage of why we're seeing data loss. And the third piece of the pie is electrological corruption. In that we mean uh, there are no mechanical parts in this device, but it's a chip-based uh, storage unit using NAND flash. And it's quite complicated to recover when we have corruption in what's known as the system area. This again is why a lot of software tools unfortunately don't work well to recover these devices. Now remember that anything can happen at any time. Reference the disasters in Colorado and Florida once again. Human error, equipment failure, floods, theft, natural disasters, a fire in your editing studio. I'm sure this iMac looks like some of the equipment some of you have on your desk at home. You know, where you have your computer, your camera gear, your flashcards, maybe even your backup storage on a RAID device. If that place burns, unfortunately, everything burns with it. Or something as playful as a fight with the family dog. And the dog typically wins, as you can see in this image. Um, unfortunately, the data is not always recoverable, especially if a dog has chewed up the actual NAND flash itself. A man's best friend is not always data's best friend. So what if data has been lost? Now what do you do? Well, first, don't panic. Uh, the initial reaction, of course, is reaction from the user, and unfortunately, uh, that can complicate the issue. The highest likelihood for data recovery exists at the initial point of failure. Everything done after that potentially complicates the data recovery process and makes it more difficult in the laboratory to get the data back. Stop and evaluate the failure. Think, don't react. Literally take your hands off. Don't take any more photos on the affected media. Absolutely don't reformat the card. Don't try to run any fix-it utilities and do not restore from some backup onto that original media. What you do want to do is to remove the media safely and store it in a proper environment until you decide what you're going to do. Um, that gives you the opportunity to make an educated choice, try software, or call us. The last thing you want to do is make the problem worse, or worse yet, unrecoverable. So what are your options if you've lost data? Well, of course, you can just restore from that per perfect backup you made last night, right? Well, but maybe you don't have a perfect backup and that's why you're in the webinar today. Um, well, there's another opportunity that you could kiss the photos goodbye. Um, if they weren't excellent shots, they were blurry, they weren't what you were looking for, I'm sure many of your photos can be discarded. Uh, the problem is you don't always have a choice when a piece of flash memory dies as to what photos are on there. Or you could possibly recreate the data or reshoot the data. Uh, you can't recreate an event that happened once in time but you can get close, so possibly uh, you could recreate the information. And if you can't do any of the above, that's where Drive Savers fits in, which is recovering the data. This is where a professional data recovery solution makes most sense, where you can't do the other three or you don't want to risk making the problem worse and potentially losing the data to yourself. So what about our capabilities in the laboratory? Let's talk about what we can do when faced with a data loss crisis. Um, here you see cleanroom engineers working to repair a hard drive that has failed. Um, this is where microsurgery is performed to resurrect and save these patients, aka hard drives or flash memory cards, full of your valuable data. So as far as the capabilities of drive savers, well, not only, of course, can we work on any and all operating systems, uh, but more importantly to you, we can handle any type of camera file format, of which there are many, um, starting out simply with JPEG or high resolution RAW, or any other type of image file format on any file system. And we handle all types of media, whether they be the variety of flash memory cards that are out there, whether they be hard disks or optical media, or any type of data storage that holds information can unfortunately eventually lose it. And we service all the different types of media out there. So what about the service levels that are available to you? 
Well, when a data disaster happens on Saturday at 3 a.m. or Sunday morning or Friday night at midnight, um, Drive Savers is always available. As most of you know, we are 24 by 7. And we offer services that cater to whatever speed and need a customer may have. Our priority service is a nonstop engagement from the point of origin till we get it into our laboratory until we complete the recovery with engineers working all night to overnight, whatever it takes. Our standard service is a typically a one to two business day turnaround and our economy service for those of you who need the data, but time isn't as sensitive is the economy service, which is a five to seven business day turnaround. We also offer high security data recovery and I'm not sure if any of you are in a profession uh, where the photos you take uh, are of secured information, but they very well may be, and you may want to protect that information, uh, especially during the recovery process. Well, first of all, we are always protecting your data, but we can offer you specialized high security services as well for extra sensitive stuff. And we now offer forensic imaging and analysis for anybody who's in law enforcement or possibly works for an insurance company or any type of photos that could potentially end up as evidence in court, you may want a forensic data recovery to protect that data as evidence. And we also offer a special JPEG only recovery service for our single drive customers looking only for a specific JPEG file format. You can call us for details on that if you'd like that is specific just to that particular market. So what about your data security? Um, I'm not sure how many of you think about your data security on a daily basis, but we always think about your data security because no matter who our customer is, it's critical that their information is protected at all times while in our process and in our possession. This particular cartoon is kind of funny, but it's actually very serious as well. Um, be careful about who you engage to touch any data of yours at any time, whether it's a service provider or a data recovery company or people you're sharing the data with, the last thing that you want to see is one of your prized photos on the internet without your credit attached to it. Be aware of your data security and if you have specific questions about how Drive Savers protects you during that process, contact us at any time or visit our website for more information. So what about some tips to avoid data loss? Um, this is really important stuff and I'm glad we're getting to it here in the presentation. And I'll spend a couple minutes on this and on backup methodology so you have some good stuff to take home today. Some of this will seem fairly obvious, but um, we do a lot of data recovery for reasons that you think would have been fairly obvious to back up. So the first thing, of course, is to back up your images and your data protect your irreplaceable photos. Um, you need to back up this data to guard against data loss of any sort that can happen at any time from any device. Transfer your photos from the camera's flash memory to a computer hard drive as soon as you can. If that's in the field, carry an external ruggedized uh, USB drive so that you can move it over there as well. Don't be afraid to take that extra couple seconds as precious as they are in the field to get a duplicate of those key photos. Don't delete images or reformat the memory card while it's still in the camera. I know you may need the space, but remember, you may be overwriting the only copy of the data, and 30% of the reason we do data recovery for these customers is because of formats and deletions. Practice safe handling of your media. Uh, the slide earlier of the dog chewing up the flash card would not be considered safe handling, nor is the wash machine or the dryer or any of the other things that we unfortunately see happen to uh, camera flash memory. Another thing that's important to do, and for those of you who have used many cards over time, I'm sure you've experienced failure of the cards just due to general usage wear and tear. You need to replace those flash memory cards on some sort of a schedule. Um, it's difficult to gauge exactly how long a card is going to last. Uh, you may have better experience than I do in that particular space by utilizing the same card over and over. There, of course, are vendor-specific issues and different media technologies in place. Um, look to your manufacturer and vendor to see if you can get any statistics on the lifespan of the media and put a schedule in place so that you are rotating and getting older media out of use and getting newer media in to replace it. Uh, avoiding extreme temperatures seems quite logical, 
but I was thinking about those firefighters and the reporters and all the news media who were shooting the fires in Colorado over the last couple of days, standing on the fringe of that extreme weather, extreme temperature. I'm sure they're exposing their uh, equipment and uh, flashcards to all kinds of stuff, as many of you do in the field. Just be aware that like any other type of storage media, these things work best in ambient temperatures, um, but just be aware of that and realize sometimes you might not have a choice. And most importantly, and this is the one to take home, expect and know that your media will fail and prepare for it. Um, the fact that I've said that out loud hopefully doesn't curse anyone into losing media sooner than you would expect, but those of you who have lost uh, any type of flashcard or data in the past know that all of these devices fail at some point. If you know that, you acknowledge it, and you say it to yourself, uh, the next time it happens, maybe you won't be so surprised by it. Uh, if it does occur, of course, and there's nothing you can do to resolve it yourself, contact DriveSavers. Um, our best opportunity to recover the data, as stated earlier, is to intervene in the failure as early as possible. So what about backup strategies? Um, I'll start by saying is there's no silver bullet and there's no one size fits all for anybody as to what the best backup methodology is. There are many options that need to be customized to suit your particular needs. We suggest three levels of backups um, at a minimum. And if you've lost data before, you probably think three is a, a good number. And that's a minimum, as I said. You're going to have your flash memory cards as your primary source of media in many cases, or P2 cards, or whatever you're saving the data to in your camera. Um, but we recommend from that an online uh, DAS, which is direct attached storage. That would be an internal hard drive or an external hard drive on a workstation, physically directly attached to that device. That can be a primary backup for you. It's online all the time. It's always available. In addition, we highly suggest a network a, a NAS or RAID device that is a device shared on your local network protected in your environment that you can access from multiple machines that's typically of higher capacity uh, using some sort of redundant technology in RAID to protect the data in case of a failure. And the third would be off-site. Um, when a fire occurs or a theft occurs, you don't want your backup in the same location as the primary data. And lastly, backup, test, verify, and restore your data on a schedule. That is the equation that equals backup, not just copying the files once, but backup, testing, verifying, and restoring. Until you have done all of those steps, you absolutely do not know if your backup is good or not. And that will give you not only peace of mind, but if you put it into place as a process, it will help protect you from any future failures. So what about backup methods? Um, I'm going to touch on what's the most popular stuff out there. And again, this could be a whole seminar just on this, but let's talk about the pros and cons of the most popular types of backup media. First of all, of course, we're talking about flash memory cards, which are all NAND flash based devices. NAND flash is the non-volatile memory that's used in these cards. It's also used in solid state drives. The, the pros of this type of media, of course, are that it's very fast, it's convenient, universal formats, um, of course not across all cameras, but it is the de facto choice uh, for the primary storage in the camera world. The cons, unfortunately, are uh, endurance over time and retention is a big one. Uh, for those of you who expect your images to last on your flash memory in archive for a long time, unfortunately, you will likely be surprised uh, flash memory, even in a best case scenario, typically has a 10 year lifespan and oftentimes much less than that. Uh, rotational hard disks actually last quite a bit longer. There's a lot of information available to, uh, online about this as well, but retention over time is an issue for NAND flash. In addition, these are complicated to recover, even in our laboratory, due to what we call, again, electrological failure. There's a lot of proprietary stuff going on with flash memory these days to uh, enhance you know, the marketability of these devices. And unfortunately, it also creates some complications in recovery. Well, let's talk about something really common that everyone also knows are internal or external hard disk drives. Again, this is traditional magnetic rotational media. It's great for a primary backup device, high capacity, 
relatively inexpensive, although a little more costly than last year. And everybody's got a hard disk. They've been in the industry over 50 years. Um, the biggest con is that you have a single point of hardware failure. Anything happens to that one drive, internal or external, it's going to crash and everything goes down with it. So what about external RAID devices or NAS, uh, network attached storage, or SAN uh, in larger environments, storage area networks? The pros are um, extra high reliability, uh, typically quite high capacity. They can be extremely fast as well. The intention here is that you're wanting to protect your data with layers of hardware redundancy. The cons are that uh, RAID boxes can be more expensive, of course, than single drives. They do need some user management, and they are still prone to failure like any other device, um, although they do offer quite a bit of hardware redundancy. What about good old tape backup? Tape is not dead, as many people say. Tape is everywhere in the world. However, it's not huge in your particular arena um, for backup of professional photography these days, but it does offer very durable and archival quality and high capacities but it is quite slow compared to all the other technologies out there today, and it's mostly used in enterprise data storage environments. Optical media like CDs and DVDs, I know a lot of people store a lot of data on rewritable optical media that is very inexpensive to purchase. Um, the pros here are that that's very common as a format, very universal, very inexpensive. Unfortunately, some of the disadvantages is that uh, users typically store them in poor environments. I don't know how many times you've seen a stack of disks on a desk in the sunlight on, in someone's office. Um, they actually don't have a great shelf life to them, contrary to what most people believe. And with multi-session burns and reburns, uh, they can become less stable as far as the file system goes. Uh, there are some websites dedicated, and if you're interested in finding out, I can provide you a link that talks about some of the best media in the world and how to identify it um, by a code on the spindle and what you might want to look for for CD and DVD media. And lastly, I've got to touch, of course, on the cloud because everybody's talking about the cloud and how the cloud can do everything for everybody. Well, the cloud does some things for some people but doesn't provide total storage uh, for anybody who's creating the type of content and quantity that you people are. The advantages, of course, are you don't have to manage it. It can be a very automated process depending on which particular cloud provider you're using. And, of course, it's very easy to share your photos. Many of these photo sharing sites are actually used as backups from customers and maybe for some of you. Um, but the disadvantages are they also can go out of business. In fact, I think uh, the Kodak Gallery recently was being consolidated going offline that I used for a long time. And some of the smaller cloud providers just go out of business with thousands of people data posted in their uh, data storage environments. Be aware that when you're using a cloud-based provider that you use encryption always for any off-site data. That you check with that cloud provider and pick one of the good big names that's going to be around for a while. And lastly, don't always expect the data to be there when you need it because just like with any other data storage failure, they may have data on availability as well. So we've got something new to introduce to you today. Um, maybe some of you have already seen this in the field if you're a customer on Newegg, but for an extra added security blanket, DriveSavers has partnered with Newegg.com to bring the data recovery service plan to their customers to help back up your backups. Basically, what the DRSP, or the Data Recovery Service Plan, offers is the ability to purchase data recovery protection from drive savers for a small fee upfront when the device is purchased brand new from Newegg. This plan entitles the user to receive one data recovery attempt during the duration of the plan if for some reason that device or that user requires data recovery. It's available now online on Newegg.com on select devices. There are three different options available for this data recovery service plan at one, two, or three years of protection. And the pricing for the plan varies on the type of device covered and being purchased. Uh, internal and external hard disk drives, laptops, notebooks, and security surveillance devices uh, currently offer the opportunity to purchase the DRSP and go straight to Newegg.com if you need some additional information. 
and you'll see that this is offered on just about any of those devices you try to purchase. Well, let's wrap this up with a quick summary before we get to Q&A. So what you probably understand from all the things I've been telling you is that it's not a question of if your storage is going to fail, but when it is going to fail. All storage hardware has some lifespan and it will all die at some point, regardless of if it's solid state drive, NAND flash based flash memory cards, RAID systems, hard drives, CDs, DVDs, tape, they all fail at some point. Be prepared for your data loss and don't be surprised by it. Uh, I lose data, you know, a couple times a year for sure, but I'm backed up. And when I lose data, I just chalk it up to device failure and I restore from my backup if necessary and I get back to work. That's where we want all of you to be uh, in case you experience one of these events as well. And I know I've said this and I'm going to say it again, backup, test, verify, and restore your data on a schedule to confirm your process, give you peace of mind, and prove that your backups are in fact good when you're executing them. And of course, you can call Drive Savers 24 by 7 if you ever need our services and are faced with a situation where you're going to potentially lose your very valuable photos. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up the presentation. Uh, and thank you so much again for the opportunity to speak to you today. And we're going to open the uh, virtual floor here to <clears throat> excuse me, Q&A that will be uh, moderated by John Christopher. Please, Please use the chat. chat function and send to all entire audience. Uh, those, question, <clears throat> excuse me, those questions that I can't answer will take offline and respond later via email. And I think we're also going to be doing a contest. Uh, we, we are going to do a contest, as a matter of fact, Chris. We're going to be giving away a 750 gigabyte um, external mobile hard drive. And uh, as Chris has been talking about backups, here's your opportunity. So um, stick with us towards the end of the presentation. We'll be picking a random number between uh, 1 and 25. And... Uh, and you will you will choose a, a number uh, by just simply typing it into the chat box. So if you hang on with us towards the end of the presentation, we will uh, prompt you at that moment uh, to put that number into the chat box. In the meantime, we'd love to answer any questions that you might have about our uh, presentation today, and uh, and certainly even in uh, regarding uh, data recovery in general. If you have some questions. Um, about data recovery. So you can use the chat box and go ahead and uh, type those in and we will make sure that uh, uh, we, we respond to those. Um, right now, don't see anything in the box, so it's possible perhaps we've answered all of your questions in the, in the summary. But uh, if something comes to mind, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to answer it for you. Uh, let's see. Oh, I, I'm seeing actually now a couple of questions coming up here. So um, let's take a look at this first question. Um, it looks like, uh, let's see, uh, is there a minimum percentage of space that you should keep free or open? My guess is you're uh, talking about your hard disk uh, and how much free space that you should have um, on your on your hard drive, yes, on a drive. Now I see the second part of the question appearing. Okay, uh, that's a great question on how much free space you want to maintain on your hard disk. So you might be familiar with fragmentation, and fragmentation is the concept that as any type of storage media fills up and as information is deleted, the files will begin to fragment all over the disk just so that they can the file system can fit them on the device. The fuller a disk is, typically the more fragmented it is, typically the slower it will be in responding to reading data. Uh, there's actually a statistic that says that uh, any usage over 60% of a disk uh, can decrease uh, its performance by up to 50%. Now, leaving 40% of clean overhead sounds like a lot, um, but it's not. You know, storage capacity is relatively inexpensive these days, but like most users, it is difficult to maintain that overhead because we're always pushing more and more stuff to the disk. 
Um, there is the concept of optimization, which used to be much more popular when a disk got full, that you would optimize it in order to defragment and speed its activity. But optimization is not as popular today, one, because it doesn't work on solid state drives at all, two, because an operating system, especially in the Macintosh environment, does some optimization on the fly. Um, but what you want to be aware of is that anytime you're pushing a disk past 75 or 80 percent full, um, you're not risking any physical problems with the device. They work just fine at high um, volume, but what you're doing is you're slowing down your access to reading your data and you're creating more fragmentation for the file system to track. That only comes back to bite you if you have a failure then on a highly fragmented drive. It can be more complicated to recover. Okay, let's go for another question here. Um, is formatting a compact flash card over and over again uh, bad for the card? Ooh, that's an excellent question. So when you're formatting the card, you are actually executing writes to the media. I'm assuming that you're talking about the slower, uh, low-level format rather than the quick format. And if that is correct, that lower level formatting is writing to all cells, uh, which is a subcomponent of blocks on the NAND flash media. And one of the things about all types of camera cards and NAND flash in the market is that the manufacturers don't tell you so much about um, what's called your write limitation or the program erase cycle limitation. The more you write to any card, the more you format any card, uh, the less uh, and, uh, durable it will become over time. So do not format your cards just for the sake of formatting them. Simply doing a quick format or erasing the photos will prepare the card for the next round of data storage. You don't need to think uh, that formatting is required in between each use of the card. Okay. Next question. Uh, do we have any recommendations for a good uh, workflow for backups when on location? Ooh, that's an excellent question. In fact, we had a similar question yesterday. Uh, and what we were talking about with the user is that when in the field, um, I know that some of you photographers are carrying a computer with you as well as, as well as your cameras and your devices. If that's possible, we suggest using a ruggedized mobile storage solution when in the field. And there are quite a few to choose from. In fact, there are some new Thunderbolt ones as well I've just seen released into the field based on two and a half inch drives or solid state drives in external USB 3 or Thunderbolt enclosures. Not only are they small in physical size, can be high in capacity, but if you go with one of the ruggedized solutions, they can take a fair amount of beating, um, as I'm sure they will get out in the field for you. If it's possible for you to incorporate a workflow that gets those primary images off of the flashcards and onto a ruggedized external storage, so that in the field you leave with two copies of your data, that's an excellent start to the workflow, so that when you're back in your studio, you can then implement those extra two or three types of backup methodology as well. Okay, Chris, you had mentioned uh, a little bit earlier regarding websites that uh, talk about the best types of uh, CD and DVD blanks that might be available. Um, do you have any particular websites that you can recommend or is that something you want to take offline? Um, I do want to take it offline, and there's absolutely a site that I'm thinking of in particular, and I don't have it on top of mind, but what it looks at are the manufacturing facilities globally of the CD and DVD makers, and gives you the codes to read off of the clear area on the inner spindle to know not only where it was manufactured, but the reputation and the reliability of media from that particular uh, fabrication facility. And so we'll make that available um, after the presentation in some way for you, our users. Or is there a particular Google search maybe that they could do for uh, best, best CD, DVD media or recommendations or testing or anything along well, those lines? Sure you could, but I, I hate to send people to a blind search, gotcha. so I, I'll do my best to provide it so that the users that are here today can get that information from us. Okay, and then a related question, uh, how should CD and DVDs be properly stored to protect them for uh, the longest, to give them the longest uh, lifespan? 
Uh, that is an excellent question. And there are some vendor recommendations on this as well, uh, as well as I believe on that link that I will propagate for you, there is some storage, uh, storage suggestions. But the, the most obvious, of course, is uh, how not to store them, which is just sitting out on your desk. Um, your CDs and DVDs uh, should be in a sunlight-free environment, ideally in a temperature-controlled environment, humidity-controlled environment, as with your flash memory cards and any other storage that you have. While I realize that it's not always convenient to have your data, for example, in a media safe, which is a great place to put it, um, that is probably your best option uh, because it's nice and dry, it's nice and dark, and it's nice and protected. Uh, that being said, there are all kinds of theories out there about how long rewritable media should last. Um, you know, if you tell me how cheap something was to purchase and that it only cost a few pennies or nickels or dimes to buy a piece of media, uh, of course that kind of makes me think that it's not going to last forever. But be aware as well, as we mentioned earlier, that multi-session burns or rewritable disks that have been written many times tend to have higher failures uh, of what we call the logical nature rather than the physical nature just due to the fact of many sessions being written. Um, so just be aware of that, that single burns are typically better than multi-burns. Is there any particular type of media that you would recommend as probably the safest or the longest insofar as backup or archiving? Oh, yeah. I love this question. It's ink and paper. <laughs> and I'm serious. Or it's, you know, a photo on proper paper uh, and film. And I'm, you know, only partially joking about that because the reality is, is that we are here talking about the state of the art storage used for the brand new devices based on NAND flash technology, the future of data storage. And none of it's going to be around in 50 or 100 years, more than likely, the stuff we're buying today. But acid free paper with a pen written on it could last thousands of years. Aside from that, the best thing that you can do is get a plan in place, not only with your backup strategy, but what we call your data migration strategy. That is how you bring your data forward into the future. Um, many of you may have stacks and stacks of hard drives, like I do at home, and I'm sure John and Doreen do. I have floppy disks. Oh my gosh. Well, we won't go there. But um, the, the, it's a challenge to move your data forward over time. So we are huge advocates of migrating the data onto new media, new drives as time moves forward, and keeping and archiving those old storage media in a safe storage environment. Um, so that later in time, five years from now, 10 years from now, you can still read that old media because the reality is its resale value is almost nothing. So think about data migration moving forward when you're thinking about protecting your data regardless of the media you choose. Okay, we have, uh, looks like perhaps one more question, uh, or if you do have a question, please uh, go ahead and type it in now. Um, let's see, Mitch Daniels asks, a, he has a, uh, a tape backup system, but he doesn't like the software interface, and is wondering if we have any suggestions. Mitch, if you're uh, still with us, I'm not sure, uh, but are you looking for Macintosh or PC operating system? Uh, he says Mac, okay. Uh, any, any thoughts, suggestions on that, Chris? Sure. So uh, I'm not sure what you're using for your, your tape backup media and your mechanism, uh, but of course one of the most popular products uh, in the history of Macintosh was the Retrospect backup product, which uh, I'm very happy to say that company has been reborn uh, with the original employees and engineers, and they're bringing that product, uh, well, they've already brought it up to spec for current. Um, now, whether or not the interface is the one that you like best uh, is, of course, personal preference, but we know that team at Retrospect, and they make an excellent product supporting tape. Uh, aside from that, I don't have any perfect uh, or recommendations for you on other software for backing up the tape, but I will take that question offline uh, for consideration and see if I can come up with some good answers for you. <laughs> 